This is my YouTube channel, The Little Walking Foot. Today I am so excited because I am going to be going through um, my inspiration and my most recent make, which I am calling No Cowards PJs. And it consists of a pyjama bottoms, pyjama top, and you can see in the background, um, a really beautiful dressing gown. So I'm really excited about this. It's probably not for everybody, but I just feel that I've managed to use my creativity, a bit of nounce because I um, had a bit of a head scratcher of trying to work out how I could use the fabric um, that I had. And I feel like my skills have improved. So really excited to tell you about it today. If it sounds of interest, then please stay tuned. welcome back so I had the inspiration to make a matching pajama set that had a very distinct style that looked like something that maybe a 1920s 1930s man might wear so I was thinking no coward Bertie Worcester um, bit Downton Abbey that kind of thing and in an ideal world, then that fabrication would be, I suppose, silky sateen, maybe a bit of piping, uh, that kind of thing. So I suppose I'm thinking very luxurious, almost kind of smoking jacket style. So last year, I had this in my mind. I went on to the Minerva website and typed in Paisley because that was kind of what I envisaged this to be like. I had wanted a silky satin type but I think that would have been too hard for me to sew. I couldn't find any anyway and so I'm really glad with what I got. So it is this fabric. I don't think it's it's no longer available because this was actually the very last bit on the roll. So I ordered five meters of it and I think from what I can remember there was about four and a half meters and they had to send the last half a meter separately so, which wasn't a problem because I had collars and things to do out of that so more than happy with that and I just love these swirly um I don't even know if it is paisley to a certain extent because it's really really um decorative I worked out that I wanted it this way up because the flowers there but I didn't bother with any pattern matching. So my original plan was to try the um, Closet Core Carolyn pyjama set and I also bought some black piping that I think I showed in one of my other vlogs. And once I had cut out the Ligon dressing gown, there just didn't seem like there was going to be enough fabric to try the, uh, to try the um, Carolyn pyjama set so that is something that I still haven't tried yet but it is hopefully going to be made pretty soon so what I decided to do was use a tried and true um, pattern which is the sew over it ultimate PJs so that's what we're looking at here I didn't bother pattern matching like I say because I, it was just too much of a head scratcher I've took about an inch off the rise and about six inches off the leg because I'm only four foot eleven and I think it's designed for five foot six. They're very wide legged these uh, pajama, um, these pajamas, but um, really comfortable and really nice to wear. I've put a Minerva label in there and I didn't bother with the um, buttonholes this time because the the string or the the ties just keep popping out so I'm obviously not doing it right. So that is the pyjama bottoms. I have the Ligon uh, cashmere um, robe in the background and I will zoom in on some of the features. I made a size 14 out of this lovely fabric and I should say this fabric is cotton um, so it's been really easy to work with you know could press really well um, 
stayed in shape and have, did what did what I wanted it to do. The oops, <laughs> the cashmere ligon robe. I made the shorter version, so I think it's version A. So it should come up to about your knees or just above your knees. It has loads and loads of chan what they call channel stitching. So there's a lot and lot of straight lines on this um, cashmere robe. But I am so pleased that I persevered with it and I stuck with it because I think it looks fab. And I think 1920s man, 1930s man, no coward would be... Um, impressed too. So I'm going to show you some of the details in a moment. And I had quite a long strip of fabric that was folded over left and obviously the Carolyn top was never going to, I was never going to get it out of that amount of fabric. It was over a metre but it was just very narrow. So I decided to make my second Donny shirt and I'm going to wear this as my um, pajama top. So the Donny shirt, I'm really pleased. It looks really nice inside because of that burrito method, which I'm now getting really confident with and I'm really loving. I've made, I think it's the medium, but I have done a full bust adjustment of two inches on both sides. So that adds inches also to the side that I didn't take out. I've also tried to lengthen it because it came out very, very short last time. So I think I lengthened it by about an inch and a half, two inches. I still actually think it needs a bit more. The next time I make this Donny shirt, I'm going to straighten it out because it's got the curved bottom, which is fine. I think it's fine for this project, but um, I just want to try something different next time. Sewed up really nicely, really quick sew, cut it out in one night, sewed it up the next and I've put the channel uh, design on the pocket of this Donny shirt that will go with the ultimate pyjama bottoms. So my Noel Coward-esque set consists of the Cashmere Ligon robe which you can get as part of um, Cashmere Club member the Friday Pattern Company Donny shirt and the sew over it ultimate trousers. Not ultimate trousers, sorry, ultimate PJs. Bottoms. <laughs> so I will get the like on the to show you a bit more later. Okay, yeah, so I'm back. So the Ligon robe that I've made is um, a size 14. I didn't bother taking anything off the length because I did still want it quite long. First of all, the back has got a seam in it for shaping. I didn't bother trying to match the pattern up and I don't think it really shows. I mean, I suppose there, there's this going on, but I'm not bothered. I'm quite happy with that. It's got what they call, I think, fish eye darts um, for um, the bust shape. So that's a new technique to me, which I've been happy with. And the uh, pockets have the channeling on. Now, originally, I was only going to do the channeling on the pockets. But then I thought, well, if I want it to, be, to look really luxurious, then I really should try and make it um, as it was intended. So I've done the channeling on the sleeves, which I absolutely love. I think the channeling there is slightly narrower than everywhere I've done um, elsewhere on this robe. And I really like that effect. It makes it more sturdy, so it actually feels really substantial. I didn't bother with any interfacing because the fabric was quite, um, quite thick anyway, so I didn't bother. And originally I'd put the neckband on and I wasn't going to sew the channels. I'd had a bit, a few lumps and bumps here or there. And so I unpicked it and thought, well, if I want to do it properly, then I really should do. So what you do is you fold it over, or this, <laughs> fold it over and then you, you fold it over the seam. So it's really, really clean and nice inside. The channel stitching first, First of all, you do the outside with one eighth of an inch and then the other channels are meant to be um, 
three eighths. I'm not quite sure if I've got the measurements quite right, but I'm happy with this. Then the belt has got, again, lots and lots of channels. So I actually went through quite a lot of thread on this project and you sew some little um, belt loops and I put the belt loop at the back as well. And I don't I've ne I never really bothered with these when um, I've, I've ever had them in ready to wear. There is the internal, um, I think they're just called internal ties, just again to give you some shaping and some security. So overall, I am really, really happy. I think when I was when I was making the finishing touches on this, sewing the final bits of the channeling up on the neckband, I had a big smile on my face because I'd managed to take something that was just an idea in my head, you know, a bit of whimsy, I suppose, to a certain extent, that I'd managed to find some fabric that really matched that vision and then put, put it together. Um, like I say, it's not for everyone, but I am just... <laughs> I'm just so chuffed with this and um, what I'll do now is I will put it on and take some pictures and I will include them here. So thank you very much for watching today. Um, I hope that you, um, you, you think that I've done a good job of this um, and I think it's going to give me uh, more inspiration to try more random ideas and you know it's one of the joys that comes out of sewing isn't it if you have an idea and you have some creativity and some time and some patience it can come together so i am going on a little trip uh, three nights um in york very soon so i'm going to wear this set with pride and pretend that i am a null coward or um i don't know somebody out of an agatha christie book um in my smoking jacket-esque pyjama set. So thanks for watching today. Um